John Seidman, and we're continuing our look at the low end of the Windows PC market with another $199 Windows PC from Asus, and this is the new X205TA, and this is another machine uh, that is designed to go up against the Chromebooks that are out there, and this is a really nice little computer. We're going to compare this one to the HP Stream 11 that we looked at last week, and we also looked at the Acer E11, so we'll kind of put this one in context of those two. Now, this is a slightly different computer than those other two machines because the HP has a Celeron N2840 processor. This one has a slower Atom processor, and because it's slower, it consumes less power, and it gets better battery life. So this gets about 12, 10 to 12 hours of rated battery life in kind of casual applications, web browsing, word processing, that sort of thing. Uh, the HP gets about eight, uh, the Acer gets about six to seven. So uh, you're getting a lot more battery life out of here, and it's also a lot lighter. This is only 2.2 pounds. It is really light, just a little bit heavier than a tablet might be. So uh, for carrying it around in a bag or something, and you, you know, if you still want a real full Windows computer, uh, this is really lightweight, uh, really nice to carry around. The keyboard is also pretty good. It's not, not quite full-size keys, but pretty close to it. So uh, not too bad on the typing. I found it to be pretty comfortable to type on. Uh, you only have two USB 2.0 ports on the side, though, so you'd lack a USB 3 port that you'll get on the HP. So if you've got external hard drives or things where you're really pushing a lot of data back and forth, uh, these ports will be considerably slower than uh, the USB port, the USB 3 port that's on those other devices. One thing that really upset me about this uh, is these little metal protrusions here on the back of the device. Now, what these do uh, is kind of stabilize the notebook when it is on uh, the desk, but the problem is on, like, especially with like a cheap IKEA desk like this, is that these metal clips will dig into wood, at least cheap wood, like on my uh, desk here. So be very careful with this because it might actually damage your desk. I actually see on my desk here, it's already scratched it up a little bit. So um, just be careful if you're using this on some really nice wooden desk. Uh, you don't want to slide this around. This is a really odd decision. I don't know why these are here, but uh, that's a big strike against it in my book. On the other side of it, you've got uh, the power adapter, which can be plugged in either way. So it can, there's no upside down for the power plug. Any way you can get it plugged in, uh, it'll work. So it's kind of like how the Macs work. Either, uh, you know, either side is good. Uh, you have a micro SD card slot here on the side. So you can pop in a micro SD card. As you can see, it runs flush to the side. I actually have a card in there right now. So this is nice. You can augment uh, the onboard storage. It's got a 32 gigabyte SSD on board. Only about uh, 22 or 20 gigabytes or so of that is available uh, because they have to leave some aside for the, uh, the recovery partition. So once everything is installed, you've got about 17 gigs or so of actual uh, usable storage. Uh, so having a little micro SD cards uh, in here all the time will definitely help. And I think they say it'll take up to a 64 gigabyte card. I got a 32 in here. It worked just fine. I don't have a 128 gig card to test, but uh, somebody else may want to chime in on that if it does work with those. I have HDMI, micro HDMI out as well as a headset port. So uh, that is the overall configuration. And now we're going to do uh, is take a look at the performance. So we're going to look at how, you know, kind of day-to-day -day web browsing works on it, uh, as well as a little Minecraft. So let's take a look at that. So before we get into some real-world tests, I do want to talk about the Octane benchmark that I run on every one of these PCs. Uh, the ASUS scored 5,520 on the Octane test. Now compare that to 8,020 on the HP Stream 11. So the HP is almost like 37% faster on raw JavaScript computational stuff uh, than the ASUS is, which is uh, really a result of the processor. They both have the same amount of RAM, the same amount of memory on board. Both have two gigabytes of RAM. Uh, but this has a slower Atom processor. But what's interesting is that as far as like the real world usage is concerned, uh, web browsing still feels pretty good on this device. It doesn't feel all that much slower. And I think, and I'd love to hear uh, from some of my CPU experts out there, I think it's the result of this having a quad core processor. It's got more threads that it can handle at once. So things like loading a lot of objects on a web page, um, you, know, you might do just as well on either because this has more cores. Even though the processor is running slower, it can handle more things at once. And I think that might be why uh, the web browsing actually feels like a pretty good uh, experience on this. So I was pretty uh, impressed with that. So it's uh, certainly a great little web browsing machine. I should add that the screen on here uh, really is the most readable of all these screens that I have used. It's really, uh, you know, the, the text looks sharper. It doesn't, it just, this looks like a better quality display than I saw uh, on the HP or the Acer. So if you're looking for something that's easy to read, uh, I think you'll be happy here. The videos do play pretty smoothly. You see this one just started up uh, right when we went to this page here, and it is playing at, at, back at a really smooth frame rate. Uh, we can hop over to YouTube real quick as well and to see how 
uh, something works over there. So I, I think you know, the browsing experience, uh, despite the fact that its benchmark is so much lower, uh, is actually quite usable. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the performance, at least for uh, the experience of browsing the web on it. I know a lot of you are going to be curious about its gaming performance, so I loaded up Minecraft here so you can get a feel for how that runs. It's a little bit sluggish. Uh, the HP was sluggish, as was the Acer, uh, but this one feels a little bit slower. It's certainly you know, playable. I bet you can turn down uh, some of the settings. I think I have it in fancy mode right now, so you could probably cut those settings down a little bit and get a little bit better performance. But it does do okay in kind of the open areas, but as you get closer to the details, uh, it'll definitely start uh, slowing down and getting a little, uh, a little bit jaggedy in its gameplay. So uh, probably not the best for modern gaming, but if you've got you know, some of the casual tablet kind of games and retro emulation, I think will run just fine, but I think you'll be a little bit disappointed if you're looking for something that'll run really complicated Minecraft maps and other modern games. All right, the last thing we're going to take a look at is just some basic Microsoft Word performance. I loaded up a little bit of a more complicated template, a little newsletter template here. So you can see it renders a little bit slowly as you're scrolling through, but uh, it is responsive enough that you can work on the document without too much trouble. So I can type in here, uh, this is a test. The text pretty much keeps up with uh, what I'm writing as I'm typing it. Uh, and it seems to be you know, pretty, pretty decent. It's a little bit behind. As you can see, as I'm typing here, uh, the text will kind of trail later. And I think this is something to do uh, with how the later versions of Office render text on the screen. I found that like Office 2007 is kind of the sweet spot for these devices. Uh, the newer version of Office, for whatever it's doing with its fancier video uh, output, uh, really kind of starts to, to slow down a little bit on some of these lower end PCs. I think if you can find like a, a copy of Office 2007 or earlier, uh, you'll probably have a better experience than you will uh, with some of the newer versions of Office. So that is the Asus X205 TA, and I really like this one. This is a very lightweight device really ultra portable. And what's funny is even though it is significantly slower in its benchmarks than uh, the HP and the Acer that we tested, it doesn't feel all that much slower. And I think it's because of those additional processor cores on its Atom processor. So if you start doing things that really go after the CPU, like gaming or you know, any other kind of computational activity, you're certainly going to notice the difference. But uh, for things like web browsing and word processing and that sort of thing, if you're looking for uh, a lighter weight PC that's a little bit more portable with a nicer screen, uh, this is a little bit better than the HP in that area. Uh, and it certainly comes in more professional looking colors. The HP right now is only uh, blue or pink, uh, both in these very hot colors. So if you're looking for something a little bit more uh, professional for a work environment, I think the Asus will probably fit that mold a little bit better. There's three other colors besides the black one here, uh, but they're all you know, not too flashy. So I think you'll uh, kind of fit in nicely in a more professional environment with it. So I like it. So I think if you're doing light tasks and want a Windows computer, uh, this has better battery life, a lot lighter. Uh, but if you're doing more computational intensive things and still want a cheap PC, uh, you might want to look then at the HP uh, or the Acer. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.